we were talking before the break about you know new construction and development, all the things that are coming to Tampa Bay. Uh, the Georgetown property is on West Shore Boulevard. A lot of people are, are excited to see it get developed because it's been vacant for so long. There's just a lot of new construction and development things. I thought it'd be good before our next break to talk about, you know, to have Arnie and David talk about from a financing standpoint, what's different with a new construction loan? What are pitfalls? And Sean could talk on the legal side. What are things people need to look for if they're buying a new home? Well, one of the things I think you need to figure out how, how long it's going to take for a house to be built. Because a couple things, um, your lock is going, you're going to have maybe have, you may float the rate or you may choose to do an extended lock. So, again, it depends on what, you know, what you, how you want to throw the dice as and far what, as. And what people need to understand, explain to them that are the, the average lay person what that means. Like, you know, the, the rate lock, that just means how long they have until their rate. Yeah, so you, 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 you talked to us today and the rates are, today, are X. And you have, we can lock that in today normally without a charge for 30 45, 60 days, okay? But if you want to extend that lock because you're afraid that the rates are going to go up, then that's a whole different conversation. You can probably get something out to six months with an upfront charge that we maybe we can reimburse you later down the road. But, you know, it depends on whether you want to roll the dice and uh, take, take advantage of what the rates are when, you're, when the house is almost finished. Or, you know, do we want to protect yourself? And that's a conversation you have to kind of analyze. Each, each person is going to be a little different. Right. And the builder is going to give you obviously an approximate date of completion, but you know you've got to make sure that that's on target. And, and sometimes that, that, that date changes. And sometimes <laughs> it can be. Never, I, I literally, man, I look at those new construction contracts, and, and we work with a lot of builders. We work with some awesome builders, but there's just so many things out of their control. Yeah. You know, the, the dealing with the county and the permitting and the city, and, and depending on where it is, I, very rarely. I mean, I always set the expectation for people that you know that that, that date may not. That date's yeah. not going to get and, hit. And so, and so as a buyer, make sure you have a place to stay in, yeah. the, in the interim. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing, your credit documents are only good for uh, 120 days. Okay, right. so if your uh, construction takes more than 120 days, it's gonna have to run then you're going to have to, we have to update your documents. So don't be frustrated with that, but that's just kind of, you know, things change. And so lenders want to make sure that you're currently able to repay the loan. Same with employment verification, all that kind of stuff. Correct. I mean, it goes yes. to an extended process. you got to double check all that. You know, exactly. they got to make sure you didn't lose your job, you know, come on. Exactly. Know? Correct. Correct. So, so, Sean, what, you know, so talk about due diligence, buying a new home. What's different for a buyer in terms of due diligence? What are some more things they need to look for and be concerned about than a typical home? Yeah, you mentioned the contract. That's where I would start because a lot of those builder contracts are very one-sided, even very one -sided. more so than some of the existing home contracts. So, so make sure you, the, you read the contract. Make sure you understand the contract. There are a lot of things in there that can delay construction. You mentioned a lot of them. Building supplies, if the contractor's having trouble getting their supplies in, that can delay construction without penalty to the, to the builder. So I would start always with, with the contract. Um, and, and speaking of, so, so obviously understanding it, because I think a lot of people will, will read it and not understand it. That's a service that you can help them. And you yeah. can help them interpret it. Because we get questions all the time, well, hey, can you explain this to me? That's not really what we're supposed to do. You know, and obviously we recommend it to you because we don't want right. to, I stayed at a Holiday Inn, but I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm an attorney. You know? So that's your you job, sleep, right? You sleep yeah. too much. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that, and that's, that's a lot of times, that's what I'll do, is I'll take the contract and I'll break it down and I'll give the buyer a, a schedule of, okay, here's this date, and this date then leads to, to this other date, and here's the deadline that we have to complete by this other date. And, and stay on top. I mean, on the, one, on the one hand, the builder contracts are very weighted in favor of the builders. On the other hand, make them stick to it. If there's a deadline in the contract and they haven't hit it, call them out on it. Yeah. I have a question for Sean. So what I see is, what do you advise buyers at the end of the process? What I see really at the end, and you know, builders need want to close because they, they have um, uh, a budget or they, they have their end of the year thing and it's all about the numbers and they want to get you closed out. But a lot of times the house has a punch out list. You go through the house and there's a punch out list, but I've heard horror stories of they never came back after the closing. Yep. To finish that half, to finish yeah. the punch out list, yeah. what, 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 what are your thoughts around that? Yeah. that? That's a big misconception yeah. because a lot of times the contract will say the certificate of occupancy and the county will issue a temporary certificate of occupancy and that is good enough to satisfy the contract. And so then there'll be the punch out issues and there's always issues with a new house. The only thing I can really recommend is to stay on top of it. Write document, write letters, make phone calls, document everything 
and, and stay on top of the builder to make sure they're, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. I think it, we're going to continue this because I think it's a good dialogue about what, what consumers need to look for when they're buying a new home and, and kind of some of the pitfalls. So we're going to continue the conversation after a quick uh, news break here on 970 WFLA.